it's a sort of a rock of San Antonio, so to speak. It belongs to San Antonio in South Texas. It's always been here and always will be here. As far as I'm concerned, it is a significant uh, element of what this community is. They might as well be talking about the Alamo. That's how much a part of San Antonio Santa Rosa is. And 120 years after three nuns started it, Santa Rosa is still celebrating life. San Antonio now. San Antonio in 1869. That was before the city had clean water, sewage, or garbage systems, when epidemics were rampant and there was no hospital to treat the sick. That was one reason that Claude Dubuis had written to France to ask for some sisters, you know, to come forward to take care of those who were stricken with cholera and yellow fever. Claude Dubuis, Bishop of Texas, got his wish. Nuns from the Order of the Incarnate Word and Blessed Sacrament arrived in Galveston. In 1869, three of those young sisters left for San Antonio to start a hospital. After the grueling 289-mile stagecoach ride, they arrived to find the building that was to be their hospital and their home burned to the ground. They were homeless and penniless, but they had a mission and they persevered. The tiny Santa Rosa Infirmary opened in December of 1869, but things didn't get any easier. From the diary of Mother St. Pierre. The roof is leaking, and when there is a storm, it is worse than the streets. We need 3,000 francs to repair it, but we haven't got a cent. The hospital was deeply in debt, hopelessly understaffed, but Santa Rosa did survive. Today, that little eight-bed infirmary has grown to become the Santa Rosa family of hospitals. Santa Rosa Hospital, an outstanding adult acute care facility downtown. Children's Hospital, serving youngsters from a 97-county region. Via Rosa, San Antonio's first psychiatric hospital and the new St. Rose Hospital and Rehabilitation Center in the Medical Center. It's very easy to get attached to the system. Uh, not being born and raised in San Antonio, but being in San Antonio for the last 15 years, uh, you develop this sort of uh, affection for the institution and what it stands for. What Santa Rosa stands for is a different kind of health care, be it rehab, uh, facility, the newest surgery in orthopedics at St. Rose, uh, the newest kind of open heart procedure at Santa Rosa, the newest and best kind of cancer treatment for, for children at the Children's Hospital. We're doing the high technology piece. But I think the more important is that there's another component. It's called high touch. I mean, it's not um, um, an appendix that comes in the hospital or it's not a, a heart problem. I mean, it's a person. And the person is composed of the body and, and the spirit. I don't think you can minister to one part without truly ministering to, to the whole person. And that's, that is the philosophy of Santa Rosa. The sisters are devoted. It's their life work. They're not there to make a living. It's their life work. Dr. Miller should know. He practiced nearly 50 years at Santa Rosa. He delivered over 5,000 babies and helped to perform the hospital's first cesarean. And we got a living baby and a living mother. And when you worked there, you knew that they were going to get the best possible care that they could get anywhere. Dr. Miller now has children and grandchildren working in the system. Well, I was born in Santa Rosa Hospital. And then, of course, with my dad being in practice there, uh, I had a really a soft spot in my heart for Santa Rosa. Dr. Miller Jr. practices at St. Rhodes. He has remained with the Santa Rosa system because he too believes in that high touch. There is always sort of a, a spirituality in taking care of patients and I think this does a lot to them as far as their physical care. Uh, it seems to enhance it for some reason. For many people, and I'm sure sickness is the first time they realize they are limited and that they're not in complete control. And um, 
that's a, that's a hard thing for all of us. And I think more than at many other moments in your life, you need a personal touch. Over the years, Santa Rosa has touched the lives of hundreds of thousands of South Texans. Well, the most fundamental connection I have with Santa Rosa, I was born there. And that's pretty fundamental and we have to begin your life uh, in an institution that you go to work uh, two blocks from every single day. Not only was Mr. Frost born there, his grandfather and his uncle practiced at Santa Rosa. And as for his great-grandfather, Ferdinand Herf, the uh, elder who came to Texas in the uh, middle 1800s, was one of the first doctors uh, that participated with the sisters in the founding of the Santa Rosa. Interestingly, Santa Rosa and Frost Bank are just about the same age, giving Mr. Frost a unique perspective on why both have endured. Santa Rosa and the Frost Bank are not committed just to downtown. A, a positive uh, aspect of any institution that endures is that it does change, it does develop, it does grow, and uh, consistent with the community. And, as we talked a little earlier, I think Santa Rosa has done that both in its services, both in its facilities, and uh, it's done it all over the community, not just in one place. You and I as individuals, even the President of the United States, have one thing in common as we trust our physicians. We as an organization, too, trust and partner with our physicians. From the very beginning of Santa Rosa, the sisters shared their mission with doctors. Today, attracting and supporting the highest quality physicians is still a top priority. Those physicians in those days were very special people. I think physicians in this day and age that work with us are very special people. Um, hopefully the highest quality people in the community. Um, but more importantly, they recognize that uh, it isn't all dollars and cents. Um, there's a human element to why they got into medicine. And hopefully they can find uh, fulfillment as a professional and as a human being working in our environment. I think uh, the uh, group of physicians, both those who have been here for many years and provided excellent care to those new ones, uh, new physicians who are now beginning their practice and, and uh, coming in all very well trained. Uh, the quality of care I think is next to none. Of course that quality of care simply couldn't exist without excellence in nursing. It is nursing that um, delivers uh, the care, the attentiveness to emotional needs, to teaching needs, to clinical direct health care needs, um, healing. Uh, it's a variety of things, but it is its own science. That science has been nurtured at Santa Rosa. There are many nurses that have worked here together as a team for 25, 30 years, and there's a reason for that. Uh, there are many things that we're taught in nursing school that are supported in this environment. You did well this morning. With our pastoral ministry services here and the nuns who still have a very active role in the hospital environment, we are constantly reminded and demonstrated how to, to live those, those standards and how to um, bring them into the, the action of, of delivering health care. Uh, as I said, it goes hand in hand with what I believe good nurses want to practice. Take a deep breath through your mouth. You have people of every color, of every interest, of every background who are interested in the hospital. Aside from its medical partners, what has helped Santa Rosa celebrate life all these years is the community, people, volunteers of every faith who believe in Santa Rosa's mission and want to help. In simple ways, in what might seem trivial ways, but in big things too. And for a patient, nothing is trivial. Rabbi Jacobson has been ministering to Santa Rosa patients for decades. He helped set up the Children's Hospital Foundation. His wife was one of the earliest members of the Santa Rosa Auxiliary. I thought it was important not to tell people about Santa Rosa necessarily, everybody knows Santa, Santa Rosa, but to give people a feeling of association with it, being part of the Santa Rosa family, which is a wonderful one. I have taken the Quality physicians, excellence in nursing, devoted volunteers. But Santa Rosa really wouldn't be Santa Rosa without the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. One of the things I believe Santa Rosa can continue to do 
is be interested in each person and each family that comes to the hospital. I think that's something that is part of our mission and we'll need to continue to be, and I believe will be. It impressed me quite a bit when I'd be lying in bed and woe is me and not feeling so good and one of those wonderful sisters would come in and help cheer you up. They have that uh, TLC, tender loving care, and I think it does so much for the patient and I think that uh, many times uh, they will improve physically when their mental and spiritual needs are met. It seems the spirit of the three original sisters still lives on at Santa Rosa. The philosophy hasn't changed. Some of the programs, the outreach, etc., have changed, but not, not the philosophy, not our mission. I like my job here. Um, the changes that are going on in this hospital right now, um, in terms of the future, are exciting ones, uh, and it, it's a wonderful combination of opportunities. Santa Rosa is changing. Today, massed helicopters deliver patients where they once came on foot. You'll find the most advanced, pioneering surgeries, the latest techniques in cancer treatment like chemoembolization, a new arthritis care center at St. Rose. The list goes on and on. I think Santa Rosa as a corporation's vision is basically the vision that it started off with. And that is, let's do what's right for the community, not what's right for us. Today, hospitals everywhere face serious challenges. Budget constraints, nursing shortages, care of the poor. Santa Rosa has faced problems like these for 120 years. And though there will inevitably be challenges ahead, Santa Rosa will endure to celebrate life as it always has. I think we've got a team here who can handle the challenges. I think between that team, uh, the physicians, and the, uh, the sisters together, the, the will is strong to deliver the health care, and I think that will continue here. I have no doubt about that.